Hey, what up, guys? So, uh, want to get through my last couple uh, first quarter top tens. Uh, this one's going to be my what I consider to be the second best division of boxing right now, which is the heavyweight division, which is back and it's back with a vengeance. A lot of good fighters, um, you know, in this division. I've bumped it up to a top 15 where I had it previously, at, I believe, a top uh, 10 coming into the year, but now it's at a top 15. So let's break down the heavyweights, the greatest division, in my opinion, um, overall of all time. Right now, it's not the best division in boxing, but it's close. So um, any outs? We have no outs. Uh, nobody dropped out of the top 10 from the beginning of the year yet. Um, let's take a look at the top 15 now. We start with number 15, former world title challenger, Carlos Takam. He wasn't ranked coming in. Um, he lost the fight last July, came back, got a win. Um, he is going to be, he is in line to face Oleksandr Usyk on uh, May 25th. That fight's been finalized. Usyk, uh, the former undisputed cruiserweight champion, undefeated, is moving up to heavyweight. And he will be taking on Takam in his first uh, venture in the heavyweight division. Uh, Takam's a tough fighter, but I think Usyk's going to dominate him. Um, I'm not sure the power that Usyk's going to carry up, so I'm going to say this fight's going to be a unanimous decision, but I wouldn't be surprised if Usyk stops him in the late rounds. So we'll see. That's uh, May 25th in the main event of, of DAZN. Uh, next at number 14 is former world title challenger Derek Chisora. is supposed to be returning against some nobody on April 20th. Uh, he's bouncing back from that devastating knockout loss to Dillian White in their rematch in a fight that he was actually winning. It was in the 11th round. Um, Jasora wants to get right back in the mix. So, uh, yeah, he, here he comes on, um, on uh, yeah, April 20th. So he should get a win there. Um, knockout decision. You know, just uh, Chisora is kind of always up, up and down. You never know. Um, next at number 13 is undefeated European champion Ajit Kabayel. He's currently ranked number three by the IBF. Um, he returned March 2nd, got a win over Andrei Rudenko, some nobody, um, a unanimous decision. You might <coughs> excuse me. You might wonder why why he's on the list. The reason he's on the list is because he beat Chisora a couple years ago, and Chisora has a win over Takam and two close fights with, um, with uh, Dillian White. So not a bad heavyweight right here in Caballero. He had a majority decision over Chisora a couple years back in 2017 and he's uh, trying to make a name for himself even though he's European so we'll see what he pulls off in uh, the second quarter of the year if anything next at number 12 is former world title challenger Bryant Jennings who drops three spots from previously being ranked number nine uh, in January he was winning on the scorecards against undefeated Oscar Rivas and he just got tired in the 12th round Rivas finished him in the 12th and final round tough loss for Jennings at his age as he tries to climb back in the mix but he didn't. He didn't get his ass whipped. He just got knocked out. So I wouldn't be surprised if at some point he gets a he gets a shot against like Tyson Fury or one of the other heavyweights that's trying to make a name. He could definitely be a gatekeeper type fighter now. So we just got to wait and see. But he's older. Tough loss for him. See how he bounces back from it. I don't know if we're gonna hear anything in the second quarter of the year yet. So we'll see. Next, uh, we have a two way tie for tenth. The first of those two guys is the undefeated Adam Konaki, Polish heavyweight. He's currently ranked number four by the IBF. He wasn't ranked coming into this. He uh, took on Gerald Washington in January on a Keith Thurman undercard and destroyed Gerald Washington, stopping him in only the second round. Now, the reason Konaki got in because of this is because uh, uh, Washington was a fighter that, um, that Deontay Wilder fought in 2018, earlier on in 2018 in February, and um, uh, which is a little over a year ago. And he, um, I know, actually, he fought him the previous year. I'm sorry. Deontay fought him the previous year, 2017. And it took him five rounds to get rid of uh, Washington in that fight. So, um, you know, Washington getting knocked out three rounds quicker against Konaki uh, about two years later. I mean, that's pretty impressive win for Konaki right there. You know, comparing him to the likes of Deontay Wilder, who's a heavy-handed fighter at all times. So, um you know, not a bad, like I said, not a bad heavyweight right here is Konaki. Um, he's undefeated. He's trying to make a name for himself. We're going to see. I think right now he's looking for a promoter, and he's entertaining as hell, so you definitely want to ch catch him fight. Tied with him for 10th is Jarrell Big Baby Miller, undefeated. He's currently ranked number two in the WBA. Um, he, he was previously ranked 10th, so he stays here. He's got the biggest fight of his career coming June 1st when he uh, challenges Anthony Joshua for the unified heavyweight title. 
Um, you know, I don't think Miller's done enough. I don't think he's, uh, you know, I'm not sure how much of a chance. I think he's got a puncher's chance in this one. Um, he definitely has the power. Can he catch him? He's definitely the heavier fighter, but he's not the taller one. So we'll see. Um, he's up and coming. He's hungry. But um, we're going to see how he does against Joshua. I'll give my prediction on that fight when I get to Anthony Joshua on this list. Next to number nine is undefeated Oscar Rivas. He's currently ranked number six by the WBA. Um, his, he wasn't ranked coming in. He got a, a shot against Bryant Jennings in January and cashed in on it. He was down on the scorecards and scored a huge 12th round TKO upset, you know, to come back right there and finish off the fight. Stays undefeated. Um, there was talks about him possibly facing Tyson Fury and Fury's first fight under top rank in June, but that got quickly dismissed. Um, not to say that Fury won't fight him later in the year because this guy is undefeated. So um, we're going to see. I think he's got opportunity fighting with top rank. I had a couple decent heavyweights, so we'll see um, after the Fury fight how he fares into the discussion. Next to number eight is the um, former world title challenger Kubrat Pulev. He uh, stay, he remains number eight. Um, March 23rd, he came back and took on Bogdan Dainu and got a scare. He got hit with a hard punch in the fourth round that opened up a bad cut on his side right here that it was, it was, wasn't too far from his eye, but it was far enough away to where it didn't bleed into his eye, which was good. But he, it, was, it was landed by a punch, and if that cut got worse, they stopped the fight. Because it was a punch, he would have been TKO'd. So after the fourth round, he put his foot on the gas pedal, really pressed Dainu. Um, he put him down in the seventh round and then hit him while he was down. The referee luckily, um, called it an act, you know, like he didn't mean to do it. So there was no need for a disqualification. Dainu continued, but then he finished him off late in the round, uh, did Pulev. So he got away with one. Bob Aram says that he's pushing for Pulev to cash in on his IBF mandatory number one contendership that he won last year when he beat Huey Fury against Anthony Joshua or the winner of Anthony Joshua Jarrell Big Baby Miller in June so Pulev could be challenging for the world title and I think he's going to get that shot against Joshua later this year so we just got to wait and see he's got to wait and see uh, what happens in the Joshua fight in June but yeah I think Pulev will be fighting for a title next next at number seven uh, next and still number seven is former world champion Alexander Povetkin Povetkin was on the list to possibly face uh, Alexander Usyk, and it looked like they were both going to fight on the same card, setting up a big fight later in the year. But uh, I haven't heard anything about Povetkin fighting on Usyk's undercard now. Um, he's looking for an opponent, Povetkin is. He's trying to get in the ring with somebody. He's calling out the big names. Nobody seems to be answering from what I'm hearing. So I'm hoping he gets a decent fight next. We just got to wait and see because he really wants one. He wants to close his career out in 2019. Um, you know, and he wants big fights. So we'll see when he lands. Hopefully one of these guys sign on the line like Dillian White or somebody to face him. Next and still number six is former WBO champion Joseph Parker. Um, there was talks about him facing Derek Chisora in April. They didn't give him enough time for to train, he said. So he passed on that fight. He said he'd still be willing to face Chisora later in the year, but just not now. So it's kind of up in the air what Joseph Parker is going to do. Hopefully we hear something soon. Um, next at number five is the is contender Dillian White. He's currently ranked number one by the WBC and the WBO. Um, he's very upset because his fight with Anthony Joshua fell through for April. And then um, he also wanted to get in line for Deontay Wilder, but the WBC granted Dominic Briazale the mandatory uh, fight to face Wilder. Really upset Dillian White as White feels he should be in the ring with Wilder next. He wants a big fight. He's coming off a, a great year where he was the heavyweight of the year and uh, scored a brutal knockout over Derek Chisora in their rematch to end the year. So, you know, why this guy's not getting a big fight is beyond me. He's waiting on a WBC ruling uh, to see if he's next in line. And if he's not, he's probably going to end up taking on a big fight next. Uh, Luis Ortiz, Alexander Povetkin. I think White needs to stay busy and go after the big dogs if he wants one of those big fights or a title fight, I mean. Uh, next at number four is former world title challenger, Luis Ortiz. Uh, he stays number four on March 2nd. He took on veteran, uh, journeyman Christian hammer. He, uh, dominated hammer, but couldn't put him away. Hammer went the distance. It ended, uh, it was a unanimous decision after 10. Um, you know, he didn't look bad. He just, he just didn't finish, uh, finish him off. He hurt him a bunch of times, but couldn't finish him. 
Um, Ortiz is still the boogeyman. He's still looking for somebody to want to face him. And nobody seems willing to sign on the dotted line. So right now, it's kind of up in the air what's going to happen next for him. It's sad, but hopefully somebody grows some balls and wants to fight him. Next and still number three is the undefeated WBC champion, Deontay Wilder. Um, he announced uh, what the Tyson Fury fight fell through, shockingly, when Fury signed with ESPN. Um, he announced that he's facing Dominic Briazel May 18th, um, which I think is on Fox, but it could be on Showtime. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I think he's going to destroy Briazel. Um, I think he's going to knock Briazel out whenever he wants, pretty much, uh, in the first half of the fight, it's going to end and he'll retain his title. Um, but not sure what that's going to mean going forward between Fury and Joshua all being on three different networks. So, um, you know, we'll see though. He's got a, he's got good options in the PBC that he could face and, uh, he's got to get through Briazel first. So I'm saying knockout May 18th on Fox or Showtime. Um, next and still number two is the undefeated former unified heavyweight champ, Tyson Fury. He shocked everybody when the, there was close to a finalized fight with Deontay Wilder. He ended up, uh, signing a contract with top rank and ESPN to uh, fight over there that threw away the fight with Wilder, sadly. And, um, recently he just announced that he's going to fight for his first time under that contract on June 15th against undefeated, but unknown Tom Schwartz. Um, I don't know if he knocks the guy out or not. Fury doesn't have uh, blitzing power. He's more of a boxer. I think he'll probably beat Schwartz by a middle to late round stoppage, possibly unanimous decision, but this fight is June 15th on ESPN. We'll see what he de decides to do after that. And then finally, still number one, is the undefeated IBF, WBA, and WBO unified heavyweight champion, Anthony Joshua. Um He's returning. He had the fight with Deontay or with Dillian White. It was supposed to be in April. That fight fell through. Now he's took, taking on Jarrell Miller June 1st, um, defending his unified title against him, coming to the United States to fight. Big time fight right here for Joshua. But um, I don't think Miller's on his level. I think Joshua is going to pick him apart, keep him at a distance, boxing, land big shots on him, wear him down. And I see uh, middle to later round stoppage. I don't think uh, Miller's going to go the distance. I don't think he's good enough to land a big shot on Joshua to affect him, but he is the bigger man technically in terms of weight. He might be able to, he might rough Joshua up a little bit. I think he's got a puncher's chance. He's not the biggest underdog I've ever seen, but I think Anthony Joshua is going to dominate this fight, get the TKO, retain his unified title, and we'll see what happens after that. All right, guys, that's the heavyweight division. True boxing, you've been hit with the truth.